To start this project, you'll need these PVC parts from your local hardware store. The one inch pipe will become the plunger piston and we can start working on that first. You can see this one inch pipe is a very close fit when pushed inside the larger tube. There's just a slight gap between the two, but in just a minute, they'll be perfectly airtight. I chose to use a few pieces of 2x4 to hold this piece in place over the blade of a table saw. Let's measure out two marks from the end of the pipe at 1 inch and another at 2 inches. You can see here that I've adjusted the blade so that when it's cutting into the pipe, it shouldn't cut any deeper than halfway through the plastic. At this point, we can get the blade spinning and hold the pipe in place with one hand while using the other hand to carefully rotate the tube. This should result in a little groove all the way around the pipe. Now let's repeat that at the 2 inch mark as well, and now we should have two clean and uniform grooves like these. The grooves are cut so that we can seat two rubber o-rings in place, and when they're fitted snug they should be just slightly higher than the surface of the tube. While we're here, let's seal this tube with a little PVC glue and a 1 inch plug. Now the plug might be tight, so just give it a few taps with a rubber mallet to encourage it all the way in. Now let's clean up the piston by wiping away the excess glue and use a bit of sandpaper to smooth down the sides of the pipe. I'm using 220 grit sandpaper and you can see it cleans up everything nicely and gives the piston a smooth finish. Now this piece of pipe only needs to be 26 inches long, so we can cut two 4.5 inch pieces from the top to create some handles that we'll use later on. I painted all the fittings and adapters black while the tubing got painted blue, except for the piston of course. Now let's go ahead and cement it together. First we'll need to glue the coupling to the bottom reducer bushing, then glue the bigger tube into that, making sure it pushes all the way to the bottom. We can go ahead and cement the handle together, but don't attach it yet, just set it to the side. We need to insert the piston first, so use plenty of lubricating jelly around the o-rings, and the pieces should connect together with just a push and a twist. Finally, we can cement the cap on top, and the hydraulic piston is complete. Now if you're wondering how the cap was made, I just took a regular slip cap and drilled a hole in the center with a 1 and 3 8 inch Forstner bit. The number 320 o-ring fit nicely inside that, and I used a little more lubricating jelly around the ring. Now you can see the piston sticks out just a couple of inches, and this is the place where we're going to attach our handle. When it's glued on tight, it should have just the smallest gap of clearance when the piston bottoms out. Well now we have a piston, let's turn it into a pump. To do that, we'll be using two of these one-way check valves that were made in a previous project. The threaded bushing at the bottom of the piston is designed to accept a 3 quarter inch nipple, and the threaded T-fitting screws onto that. If you try this yourself, make sure to use something like thread tape to ensure the connections end up watertight. Our two check valves can connect in line with the bottom of the T, and because they're threaded, we'll have the convenient option of switching or replacing them anytime we want. At this point, you should have a completely operational water pump ready to test out. It's very important that the valves point the right direction, so that when the piston is pulled up, the water flows in, and when it's pushed down, it flows out the opposite side. Alright, let's see what this thing can do. If we place something like a balloon over the outflow valve and begin to pump, you can see the balloon blows up on every downward stroke. If you try adding additional pipes to the valves, you'll be able to leverage the pump with your feet. I tried putting balloons on each valve so you can see how every cycle sucks air from the red balloon and pumps it into the yellow. When all the air gets used up, the balloon gets sucked inside. Now this opens up the option to using the system as a vacuum pump, and we can get a rough idea on how strong it is by blocking the valves from both directions. This time when the piston is pulled back, it creates a strong vacuum in the chamber, which you can clearly see when we let go. For more variety, I tried converting this into a vertical pump and was able to pump 3 gallons of water in about a minute. Each cycle seems to pump just a little over 2 cups of water, and I found that by leveraging the pump with my feet, I could double the flow rate and move over 5 gallons a minute. Some additional features are that the handle can rotate a full 360 degrees, and perhaps my favorite is how easily it comes apart for servicing. If you need to get inside the pump, just give the handle a sharp tug and the whole plunger comes right out. This gives you easy access to clean it, or add more lubrication if you need it. Well now you know how to make a simple PVC hand pump that can be used for compressing air, pumping water, or creating a vacuum.